My name is Pearl Emefani Kekote. I'm a corporate secretary and a mom of a one-year-old girl. For me, um, I've had irregular menses for some time. So when I didn't see my period for two months, I thought it was normal. So as time went on, I started feeling pains in my lower abdomen. So I decided to get a pregnancy test because I was married. So obviously, the, that possibility was there. So I got a pregnancy test. I didn't test immediately. I waited, slept when my husband was fast asleep. Then I went to the washroom, urinated, and then tested, and it, I saw the two lines, and I realized I was pregnant. Even that, I wasn't convinced. So the next morning, I went to the doctor's office to have the blood sample taken, and yeah, the doctor confirmed I was pregnant. Well, I think that's normal for almost everybody. The care and attention you get, that, that's basically it extra care everywhere you go oh madam i'm here with you know oh madam go you know those kind of things that's basically it. aside that what else and also yeah well before i got pregnant i had a lot of pimples on my face but funny enough when i got pregnant all the pimples vanished so i think i enjoyed that <laughs> so yes that's one of the things i really enjoyed about the pregnancy the fact that all the pimples went away yes i had the smoothest face ever <laughs> Uh, me, my husband wanted a girl initially, yes, but me, I, I didn't think I was looking forward to any gender. So I didn't even want to check the sex of my child throughout my pregnancy journey. So when I was buying stuff for baby, I was just buying neutral colors. Just if usually they say blue for girl, boys, pink for girls, but I would go for colors like white, violet, you know, colors that doesn't talk about any sex, yes. It was when I was about my 36th week, that's when I just asked the one doing the scan what the sex of my baby was, and she said it was a girl, I said, okay. So, honestly, I wasn't really looking forward to any gender because children are a blessing, so anyone that comes was just fine with me. Um, it was a Saturday morning, so I woke up going about my normal chores. I was having breakfast and started feeling funny pains there. I went to the washroom and it was all good, so I thought, oh, it's just one of those pains. I ate, had, took my shower, then I went back to bed, slept, woke up, and I was stronger than ever. So I thought, oh, this is not even labor after all. Then I went to the kitchen and I cooked fante fante with banku when I was about to eat. Then I realized that no time was up, so I had to rush to the hospital and yeah, deliver. So that morning, honestly, there were no signs of hey, you're in labor. No, nothing of that sort. I, I was just going about my normal activities the day, yeah. I didn't have the water break. That was one thing I was looking out for. And I didn't have the mucus plug come out, no. So nothing of that sort. So then I just assumed it wasn't labor. Yes, so there was no water breaking. There was no mucus plug, nothing. No show, like absolutely no show. I was in the house, as I said, with my sister-in-law. We ate and did everything, and she had to leave. So she left, and I sent my husband a text message. Then he was awake that um, there's going to be an emergency, so he should prepare and come home. Then my sister-in-law came back, and she said, oh, she just had a feeling she had to come back. So when she came, I was in so much pain. That is when I realized yeah, I had gotten into labor. Then she asked for my hospital bag, picked it up, helped me wear something. I didn't even wear a bra, no pants, nothing. Just the dress. We got into the car and the road from my house to the hospital was a bumpy road. So you can imagine being in labor and on that bumpy road, we're just going into valleys and hills. 
So we go to the hospital and the security guy should bring a wheelchair. He was like, oh, madam, are you in labor? Obviously, I'm in labor. <laughs> So before he even brought the wheelchair, my sister-in-law had helped me halfway through to the hospital. I sat in, got there, and the junior midwife came and she was now trying to take my blood pressure. And I said, Madam, look where I am. It's not time for blood pressure. You need to be fast. So they called the senior midwife. She came in and put her hand gloves, checked, and she said, hey, tiwa. so come and give birth. And I don't, I don't even remember when I took off my clothes. I just took the clothes off, went into the delivery room, and all I could hear was, hey, start pushing. So I was pushing, and she said, you are just making noise. You are not pushing. Like, push, push. And I was just pushing. And because my labor had advanced, in no time, my baby's head was out. And they took the baby, and they cleaned and everything so my sister-in-law had called my husband to come so when he came the baby had just come out yes and to clean her and to prepare her during the delivery it was quite smooth as i said it was quick everything just happened but then my woes as i'll say began after delivery waiting to deliver the placenta so we were there and oh the placenta was not coming and the maid was just saying oh bye 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 so i was waiting waiting no show then the senior midwife gave me oxytocin in the thigh one hour after still the placenta wasn't coming then she gave another oxytocin into the placenta through the umbilical cord that one too the placenta was still not coming out so they had to call their senior most midwife who was away. She also came, looked at the situation. There was nothing she could do. They called the doctors in. And the doctor was a bit inexperienced because I gave birth in a small private hospital. So he advised I'm um, transferred to a bigger hospital. So I gave birth about 7.15 p.m. And as at 10, my placenta was still in there, hadn't come out. And I was bleeding throughout this period. So they took me to the bigger hospital. We got there and the one on duty in the emergency ward looked at the situation. She said, ah, na placenta ketua we in a hospital for a woman to me again. Like she was, she thought it was something small they should have handled. So she took me in and said, oh, what I'm about to do is going to be painful, but brace yourself. And that was the first time I'd seen the hospital gloves as long as to your elbow. I'd not seen it before. So she wore it and she said, oh, I'm come to put my whole hand into your vagina to pull the placenta. And I just missed the heartbeat, like seriously. So she did that, put her whole hand in there and it was so painful. You know, something coming out is not as painful as something going in. So she just held the placenta and pulled it and it just came out and so much blood everywhere. And because I'd lost so much blood, they had to do blood transfusion. So they gave me three pints of blood transfusion actually. Yes, yeah, so I was in the emergency ward and I had the whole ward to myself actually. So <laughs> I was there with the nurse who was looking after me. And all that time, my newborn baby was with my mother-in-law. So she was taking care of her. So the um, nurse on duty said I should breastfeed, even though I didn't have energy. So when we're breastfeeding, she realized that my baby wasn't sucking like she should. So she called uh, one of her colleagues who was in charge of the um, emergency for the newborns. And they did this blood sugar on my baby and realized her sugar level had dropped. She was going to, is it high, hypoglycemia or something of that sort. So they had to rush her to into emergency because, you know, so they took her there. So we're in opposite words in emergency. So <laughs> that was a <the> story. <laughs> So in the hospital and, you know, because I'd lost so much blood, my veins had kind of collapsed. So any 
medicine they had to give through IV was a problem. They couldn't find my veins. They had to be pricking me left, right, center. And the cannula couldn't even stay in the vein. So after they have to remove it, so every medication they have to do a new cannula. So honestly, I was going through a lot in the hospital and we stayed there for five days because, because of everything, I'd had so much infection my baby to us developed an infection so we stayed in the hospital for about five days i gave birth on the 20th of april and all this happened into sunday morning so from 7 pm throughout a sunday all this and the monday 22nd april was my husband's birthday so he didn't know whether he should be happy or he should be sad because <laughs> it's his birthday his baby has arrived yet the baby and mother in emergency and it wasn't easy. Even he getting the blood for me, he had to move from Ridge to Kolebu to all the way to Shai Sudoku, somewhere just to get blood for me. And this story about people dying because of blood is real, you know. It's only when you go through the experience that you get to know that, you know, there's not much blood in the system. Yes. So we were in the hospital, so after five days, that is when postpartum depression set in and postpartum depression i always thought it was something that happens in the western world they have big names for small things but i realized that yes you get depressed i was fighting with my husband when i wasn't supposed to i was getting angry at things that were not necessary and he he, he kind of understood everything that was going on I don't know if it's his upbringing, but he was just calm throughout the whole period. We got home and just one week after we named the baby because we did, after all that we had been through, we didn't want to wait for any. So we named the baby and in the house, my sister, then my mother-in-law had developed a cold, so she didn't want to come. So it was my sister-in-law who started helping with the washing, cooking, cleaning, and I was just taking care of the baby, yes, so that, that was it. Then two weeks after my mother-in-law came in, she has been with me since. She's been a blessing. She has been helping, so giving me, you know, she has seven children, so she has all the experience you can think about. And funny enough, she doesn't have any of this archaic traditional ways of doing things. She kind of goes with my flow. If I tell her, oh, this is what I want to be done for the baby, that's what she does. She doesn't do her old traditional things. I just tell her, mama, this is no more in vogue, please. So she goes with the flow. Yes, yeah, so that's how it's been. Naturally, I'm a big person, but surprisingly, throughout the time, even before I gave birth, I never had stretch marks. But when I got pregnant, the stretch marks were all over my stomach. Nowhere but just my stomach. And you know, funny enough, I wasn't seeing them because they were under the belly. So I thought, oh, I'd gone through this journey without stretch marks. And one day my husband was like, ah, there are stretch marks on your stomach. I was like, oh, you're kidding. So I went to take a mirror and then I put it there and I saw all the stretch marks. So yes, there have been serious body changes. You go, I, I didn't gain too much weight in my pregnancy journey, yes. So I was still the same size, it's just the stretch marks, yes, that was some of the changes on the body. For me, the day I got pregnant till now, I don't think I've had any sleep, any sound sleep. As I said, oh, with your mother so die, I don't think so, honestly, because after the sleep, the moment you get pregnant, sleep is so far away from you, very far away. So I was sleep yeah. honestly, I've, I've not slept well at all. I've, I, I don't remember the last time I had a good sleep. No. <laughs> I went back to work six months after delivery. And sometimes when you're in the office, you have to be thinking, is your baby okay? Is your is she safe? You know, that mother instinct is there. So I have to be calling my mother-in-law offering to be checking if my baby was okay. But now 
I'm okay going back to work. Sometimes I just even want to leave the house and just have mommy time to myself. <laughs> you know? So going back to work, yes, I've adjusted quickly. Yes, and I'm, I'm going about my normal activity. Our first immunization was the day of delivery and she took that so well. So in my mind, oh, then we went for the six weeks one and hey, she was crying. And I even started crying myself. And my husband was like, ah, now why are you crying? You <laughs> see, you are taking the injections. I was really so bad for my daughter. And the subsequent one, the nurse said, oh, they are going to be very painful. So anytime it was getting close to the immunization, honestly, I start missing heartbeats. And the day of the immunization, I take the day off. I don't go to work because I feel no one will give her that care at that moment. So I want to be the one to be there to give her the care. So the day of the immunization, sometimes I give her some small paracetamol ahead of the pain. Yes, yeah, so we go there and she takes the shots, we come home, she'll cry a little. And I, I give her the best care that day because I don't want any cries or anything. Yes, yeah, so it's been a journey with the immunization, honestly, and I'm glad we have finished the immunization because some of them were just too painful, honestly. I tried to do exclusive breastfeeding for six months, but from the fifth month, I realized anything I'm eating, my baby is grabbing the spoon. So we started with Tom Brown for her, very light. And she took it very well. She was good on the solid. So we started giving her Tom Brown. And by the time she turned eight months, we started adding potatoes with chicken and um, carrots. And then we started doing soft banku, the rice and the light. Then by the time she was about 10 months, it's like she doesn't want any food again. Anything you give her, she spits it out. So her weight started coming down. And the feeding has been a challenge since then. Initially, she was eating so well when we're transitioning from breast milk to solids but now it's like the feeding is a challenge you have to be following her with food you have to be dancing for her to eat sometimes i have to be rolling on the floor just to get her to eat something so honestly the transition has not been easy honestly it's not been easy at all i've had one and it was a very funny experience my husband had left for work so that morning i was in the house with the baby and that is when she started rolling for the first time so we're in the house and usually when my husband leaves i take my nap because he leaves by five o'clock in the morning so we were still sleeping and i don't know what happened that day i just dozed off my husband my baby was at the bed adventurous he was rolling, rolling. all i heard was boom when I opened my eyes, she was on the floor and crying. That day, I didn't know what to do. I just carried her from the floor and I called my husband. And my husband said, what were you doing? <laughs> I said I was asleep. You were asleep. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't brush my teeth. I just wore a dress and we rushed her to the hospital. And we got there. Oh, before I got to the hospital, she had stopped crying. She was like, she was okay. And the doctor examined her head and her, she, the doctor said, oh, she's fine. Get some paracetamol, we do. <laughs> and we came back home. Since then, the sleep, it's like I'm sleeping and one eye is open because you just have to be watching after such accidents. <laughs> Mine wasn't for long, so I think about two weeks. Um, as I said, I was always angry and I was always picking fights with my husband but after I get angry and my husband wouldn't react naturally that is how he is he would hardly react to things like that so I would sit back and look at the situation and be like ah did you did you even have to get angry at this you see so I identified that yes I was depressed and 
it was as a result of you know giving birth and everything maybe my expectations didn't meet the reality after all that had gone on so maybe that is what was making me depressed but with time my husband was very understanding and very supportive he, he would even when I wasn't right, he would still say you are right. But with time, I don't know how I got to write. I don't think I went to see a therapist or anything. But it, it just kind of went away by itself. Yes. And with time, I came to accept the fact that, hey, baby is here. You just have to deal with it. So that's, that's it. Okay, for me, dealing with a toddler, you are not sure what the baby want, wants at a particular point in time. The child is crying and you have to try, is it food? Is, it, is she feeling hot? Is she thirsty? Is her tummy hurting? You just have to be doing guesswork and try and error. And it's very challenging because sometimes you give food, they eat a little and they are still crying. You give water, they are still crying. You take their clothes off, they are still crying. So. You just have to keep guessing and that is very challenging honestly. You have to be guessing all the time because even when they are sick and you take them to the hospital, they don't even have the mouth to tell the doctor what their problem is and you the mother will have to be answering questions for the baby and it, it's a bit challenging, yes. Oh, <laughs> for that, anytime I go out and like, it's like about time for me to come home the fact that my baby senses the fact that mommy has to be home around this time and when i'm not home she's going to throw tantrums so she's it's like i go home and let's say every day i'm home by six so it's like she doesn't know how to read the time but it's like when it's six o'clock she knows that hey mommy has to be home so when she's not seeing me around then she'll be throwing tantrums, she'll be crying, then I have to be called, oh, where are you? Are you on your way home? So she's expecting me. And the moment she sees me, everything comes to a halt. It's me or no one else. And that is it. And the smiles and the joy in seeing me, she has this funny laughter she does. And she does it only when she sees me. So it's, it's very rewarding and it's, it's also rewarding knowing that a life depends on you. Any decision or any actions you take, you consider the fact that, hey, I have a child to raise and you have to make very meaningful decisions in life, yes.